Hello everyone, this is a video lecture for Calculus 3, section 16.1, Direction Fields. So, um, basically, we're entering into chapter 16, it's going to be different, and that's okay. Uh, this first section is actually very simple, and it has a little bit to do with uh, what we're going to be working on. You're going to see notation that we'll be using as we keep going. Um, but overall, it's more of a graphing section uh, than anything else. So, um, let's go ahead and just start doing one, and I'll demonstrate as we go. So, I got this capital F vector, um, and it's equal to, they say, 0.4 and negative 0.3. Now, before we keep going... These are not typically just numerics, but they also include X's and Y's, as you'll see here on the next question. Um, if I wanted to draw this as a vector, say starting from the origin, I would have a positive 0.4 and a negative 0.3, so something down there, okay, something like that. But the thing is, is that this technically is a function in terms of X and Y, I, they don't have an X and Y here, so it's kind of a strange thing. Well, again, we'll see that here in just a second. Um, but essentially, they're saying any X, any Y, any time, any place, anywhere, we're going to have the same vector. So what we're after, actually having to do is draw the same vector, not just from the origin, but from any particular place, any X and Y coordinate, essentially. Um, so draw another one, another one, another one, another one. They're all the same shape and size as that original. Um, there you go. That's actually your answer. They just want that picture there. Uh, it doesn't ever change. So let's compare that to 161007, which is a lot more X's and Y's. So this one says that I have YI plus XJ divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's my new vector. Now, if we wanted to do the alligators, then it would look something kind of like this here. And that's fine. And they're saying, go ahead and graph it. Well, notice that it's not just a single number anymore. It's really complicated looking. So... Basically, we're going to have to break down different pieces of this and understand how to graph it. But in the end, we're going to have an X and a Y. And then I'm going to need to find out what my F vector is for that X and Y. So real quick, in particular, let's just say that I had 0, 0. We'll notice that we'd have a 0 in the top, but we also have a 0 in the bottom. So technically, this is uh, undefined. Undefined there. But in a way that only because this denominator is there. Let me make another point. Let's say that we got uh, 1, 0. That's my point on my graph. And so I go and plug in uh, 1, 0 in everywhere. Well, your vector is going to end up being a 0, 1. That's your vector answer. And that's actually what you start graphing. So at 1, 0... Uh, which is actually right here, 1, 0 point, your vector from that point is 0, 1. So basically it's a straight up little unit vector. Let's try 0, 1. So again, we're starting at this point right here. What would that vector end up being? Well, it's 1, 0. When you plug this in, x and y, into these, I guess into that big vector there, uh, it, you end up with a 1, 0. So that's going to end up being a unit vector this way. And you basically keep repeating this process um, like a million times, and you should get your full picture. Um, a 1 and a 1, this is a little different because you got a 1 and a 1, and down here you would have a square root 2. So 1 over square root 2, and a 1 over square root 2. Where if you were to actually redo this, it's square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2, which you should recognize from the unit circle. Uh, essentially, at this point, 1, 1, I have a unit, a 1 distance here, going out at 45 degrees. Okay, And again, you're supposed to do this like a bazillion times, and then you can finally make your picture. 
Um, I think an easier way to do this particular problem is to almost ignore these denominators for just a moment. Think of it like this. When you're dividing by this magnitude, I don't know, x, y, whatever's up here, when you're dividing by this magnitude, you're simply saying that it should end up being a unit length. A unit length. And so I, instead of going so far into trying to plug it in into every little spot, just notice that every one of these is going to be a unit length, length of one, essentially. And so what we're really graphing is uh, a y comma x graph, I guess you can say. Um, and so you can pick all kinds of points. So it, using this understanding and just making sure that it's going to end up being a unit, uh, let's pick, I don't know, we're just going to pick some other number here, 2 comma 3, something like that. So 2 comma 3... So, like, what's going on at this point right over here? Um, well, then, well, you got 3, 2. So 3, 2 is, again, more at, and more x. My vector is more x than y. Um, so it's going to be going this way over here. Now, again, remember, this is not really the answer. You're supposed to make it unit. Uh, so, like, divided by the magnitude of this stuff here, we're looking for a unit answer in the end. But that's the direction it's going. Let me go ahead and fill in the rest of the pieces. I'm sure that there's other ways to get all these answers. Um, it, I mean, it just takes a while to go and do it, but s thankfully it is multiple choice to some degree. So you can kind of just, you know, start picking, oh, well that vector works, but this one doesn't. Um, so they got some kind of motion here going this way, going down, going up this way. There you go. So that's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of not a, not a not a spiral, but something kind of like it. You're you're pushing up into your diagonals, I guess you can say. I don't know. It's um each graph is certainly different. What I'm trying to say though is that you have a particular graph. They're all multiple choice, and you go in like, oh, I'm gonna look at that vector right there, and so I'm gonna see if that vector makes sense. We'll find out where it starts. And then you plug it in and see if you actually get this vector out of that point, okay? Maybe, like, I want to see if that vector's real. Like, maybe another graph would have, you know, the vector going the other way. Or maybe go straight down. So, when you pick that point from where it starts, somewhere over here, I don't know, maybe negative 5, uh, 5. So, if you pick negative 5, 5 and plug it in and you actually get this vector going down that way, oh, and it actually should match up. So, keep in mind that we're talking about... Uh, multiple choice answers that really really helps uh, get the answers here okay here's another one and it's actually kind of similar so f is now equal to I got um, y i minus x j then again divided by the magnitude so we're thinking unit but you can see that it's essentially for Graphing purposes is going to be something like this. So x, y, and then y negative x, something like that. And as long as we keep it unit vector, then we should be fine. 0, 0 will still be undefined because of the way you're dividing by 0, essentially. Uh, 1, comma 0 now gets you this guy here, which if I start graphing that here, we have it going straight down. If I got 0, comma 1... And that's going to be 1, 0. So right here, we're still going this way from that point. And 1, 1, we now have a 1, negative 1. So at this point here, we're going uh, down this way. Okay. Doing all the rest of them, and again, I'm picking just some easy quadrant 1 points, but eventually what happens is you have this spiral action here. It's just going uh, clockwise. Okay, so that's the idea. That's the motion of that. Okay, 16, 1, 0, 1, 5. They give me my, my f as y, comma, y plus 5. Well, here it's kind of interesting because when you start um, plugging in your x's, you're going to see that there's no place to plug in an X. So X doesn't matter. You can do whatever X you want. It's all really dependent on what Y is. So let's start with Y equals 0. You can see we get 0, 5. Let's go ahead and do that there. So at Y equals 0, which is uh, all right here, 
we have it going straight up five distance. Okay, notice that I'm saying x doesn't matter. Any x, all x. Um, one, plug it into one, we got a one, and then we got a six. So at one, which is, I mean, because that was a five distance up, that's, that's five right there. So one is like way down here somewhere. At one, we're talking six height, but one over. So it's just slightly curling over now. Something kind of like that. Notice that they're overlapping. That's fine. It's just, again, magnitudes and stuff. And as you keep going, twos and threes and stuff like that, you'll, you'll see the rest of the picture. What happens is that here at negative five essentially is where it kind of changes. So this stuff here is going up in this direction. And down here, it's going down in this direction. And eventually here, it'll be going in this direction again. Okay, cool. Um, again, x does not matter. Okay, that's why I can put it at any x value, and it's always the same there. 16, 1, 0, 21. So my f vector now is x, y, and then 4. This is interesting because we're now going into 3D. The web assigned answers, they're not the best, but, I mean, they're going to look okay. Um, I would say they're going to look a lot better than what I can draw for you here, uh, but I will attempt it. Notice that my x and y is basically x and y, but I always have a height of 4. I'm always going up 4. So um, if I had plugged in x, y, z, making a table here essentially, and then here's my f. If I plugged in 0, 0, 0, so that's literally right here at the origin, what should I get is 0, 0, 4. And so I'm going up 4 distance right there. Uh, what if I got 1, 0, 0? Well, then I got a 1, 0, 4. So at 1 for x, I'm going a 1 distance further for x, but also keeping that height of 4. Uh, this is strictly on that plane, by the way. I'm just going along that plane. Uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 4. So again, over here, I'm now going to travel down the y distance, and that's right along that plane as well. And of course, if you plug in a 1, 1, 0, uh, 1, 1, 4. So if you're right around here, then it's going in both of those directions. Still, again, all these heights should technically be 4. Um, and so... It's not really the easiest to see, but as you keep going out, they're going to increase your X's and Y's. It'll keep going this way. Um, but then your height is always 4. So um, it's expanding out. It's getting bigger and bigger as you keep going this way. And it's it's like kind of like an explosion in a way. Uh, it don't, it's almost like an anti-explosion because it's, it's getting bigger as it goes out further. Um, but the heights of all these if you're at least on the xy plane here, uh, should all be a height of 4. If you go up a little bit, you'll have another 4, so that would be like an 8, perhaps. And then you got its own amount there. Uh, again, the web assign multiple choice answers are probably a little bit better, but you can just basically kind of picture it and see. If you saw a graph, like for instance, that these arrows are all going down, uh, down, down, out of the plane, yeah, obviously that's wrong. That's not that's not a good graph at all. So, you know, it's kind of like a process of elimination a little bit. Okay. And now we switch to actual, um, I would say, like numerics in a way. It's not algebra. It's just a little different. So those are graphs. Now we're going to kind of do a little bit of back and forth here. Let's talk about um, our gradient for a second. So let me let me go ahead and set up the problem here. Little f, notice it's a little f, not a capital F, is 7 times the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay, so that's my little f. And what they're looking for is grad f. Let me draw that r really well the first time. It's an upside down triangle, grad f. And that's, again, how do you say that grad or gradient of f? So let's talk about gradient for just a minute here, okay? Um, in fact, I don't. I think we did gradient already. Yeah, we did gradient back in chapter 15. But let me just refresh you, of course. So gradient, uh, so grad F is essentially your Fx, Fy, Fz, 
derivatives, those are first partial derivatives, in the terms that they are. So this is a vector, and you're doing your derivatives in the terms that they're located in. So the x term gets the derivative in terms of x, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that was just a little refresher, but I think we had done that already. So moving on, uh, let's find grad f here. Basically, this is all to a one-half power. That one-half power is going to move to the front. So uh, we're actually going to get seven halves. Leave the inside alone. Now it's going to be to the negative one-half power. And on the inside, you take the derivative of the inside in terms of x, uh, would be, this is actually all in the first component there, uh, a 2x. And then you repeat. It actually looks very similar for the other two y's and z's. Uh, and we're basically done. You can simplify a little bit by saying, oh, well, the twos are going to cancel. And then that x is going to come up. And so x over the square root is now in the denominator. Uh, and then y and then z. It's basically the same thing. So there's your answer for that one next problem um, so I've got 16 1 0 31 little f of x y is equal to 7 x squared plus 7 y squared and they say find the gradient field the gradient field well we've been doing this direction field stuff the graphing of it but we need to find the gradient, which will end up with a vector, and then we can go and graph it. Well, what's my derivative in terms of x? 14x. What's my derivative in terms of y? 14y. Um, and then I'm going to graph this guy. So notice that if I plugged in as, like, we're doing the same thing we just did, literally no change from the last problems. Making a little table, I'm going to graph it. 0, 0, you get a 0, 0 vector. Uh, 1, 0, et cetera, et cetera. Essentially here, it's kind of like that anti-explosion thing I was talking about. They kind of start small as you're really close, uh, but then as you get out further, they get bigger and bigger and longer. And so then as you're going out here, they're really big on, as you go way out. Okay, there you go. So kind of like an anti-explosion. Because explosions typically are like really, you know, they, they're they very big where it started and it kind of tails off. So it's kind of like the inverse of that in a way. I'm trying to describe it in terms that we can kind of understand. So we got f is equal to uh, 6 times x plus y all squared. And then again, find the gradient field. So uh, gradient f, grad f. Um, so for my two terms, I'm going to go ahead and bring the 2 down. So I make it 12, x plus y now to the 1 power. And what's your derivative from the inside for x is a 1. So, I mean, really, you're not doing anything different here for your x's and y's. They should be the same. So 12x plus 12y and 12x plus 12y. Keep in mind that x and y are the same. So... Uh, you know what's funny is when your x terms and your y terms are the same, like this chunk is the same as that chunk. We'll go back when is y equal to x is this 45 degree line, right? It's going to be kind of like this, uh, but what's happening is that it's going on at all points. So, I mean, basically we have vectors going out and in from this point right there. Uh, because if it's a, like a magnitude thing, the closer to zero, the smaller the vector will be, but the further you get away, the bigger it'll be. So, uh, in fact, it's going to be kind of smaller around right here, but then, like, as you get out, it'll get bigger. So it's kind of like that anti-explosion thing again, um, but it's all along that line right there. This is that dividing line, because all of our y equals x lines are 45-degree lines, essentially, right? Okay. Again, multiple choice. Just pick the one that looks the best. We already discussed that. Okay. Um, and this is actually my last problem for this section. So I got this v vector is equal to x squared, and then x plus y squared. Uh, they say this is the velocity of a particle at t, comma, comma, that's it. That's my velocity. 
at t equals 3, we have it at point 0.5 comma 2. And they say, uh, find the location uh, at t equals 3.01. So um, I, I don't think I even graphed this one. It's more of just kind of analytical, I guess. But we have this particle at this certain point, and it's traveling, it's moving along this line somehow, this velocity thing. Well, what I'm going to do is say my velocity is kind of like a speed. And I want to know what my speed is, essentially. I'm not, it's kind of, it's velocity, speed. They're basically the same. We're just looking for a magnitude in this way. So uh, V vector at 5, 2, how fast is it going? Where is it going? So when you plug in the 5, you get 25 here. When you plug in the 5 and the 2 here, 5 plus 4 is a 9. So this is, this is essentially like a speed or a velocity. It's, all, it's a velocity simply because it's giving you the direction also, uh, but it's also telling us how fast we're going in each component. And so um, they're wanting to know, find the location of it at this point. Well, here's the thing. We're, we're basically taking my original velocity here and i'm wanting to uh for my that's like my speed i'm saying we're traveling from 3 to 3.01 so that's only a 0.01 difference so what i'm going to do is simply take this velocity and multiply it by i guess you can say 3.01 minus 3 uh, terminal minus initial kind of stuff uh which of course that's a 0.01 and you go and do the math and you got 0.25 and you get 0.09. So this is the distance traveled. I'm going to just say distance traveled. Okay. Well, of course, we're going to start at the 0.52. That's my start point. And then plus my distance traveled. Something like that. Uh, and so you end up with 5.25 and 2.09. And there is your final answer. All right, we're done with that section. Thank you very much. Have a great day.